This video is all about expected value. And expected value is a really important concept in business. It tells us what we can predict about a random variable. And essentially what it is, is it's the average of a random variable using its probability distribution. It's a really um, important concept for people uh, putting together stock portfolios or projecting returns on projects. And we're going to see a lot of examples of that later. But here I've just pulled up an example that actually comes from the last video on um, random variables and probability distributions. We have this customer service response survey where we've asked our customers uh, how satisfied were they with their experience rated on a scale from one to seven and the number of responses for each of those scores that were associated with each of those scores out of a survey of 200 customers. I've put down the probability distribution already since we used that um, in, in the last video and I'm not going to go over it again. But I also added in here, just for the heck of it, I took all the responses, there's 200 of them, ordered them by the, uh, the value that, that was returned, and that's, we're going to use that a little bit later. But the expected value is fairly easy to calculate. We just take each of those scores, multiply it by the probability, and add them all up. Most of you will probably, probably be thinking, oh, that is the weighted average, and that's exactly correct. So I'm going to use auto sum here. And what this tells us is the, the weighted average, i.e. the expected value, tells us that we can expect on average a customer to rate us with a 4.26. Now obviously they're not going to give us exactly a 4.26 because that's not an option. Um, this is, a, these are, as you can probably tell, this is a discrete random variable. Uh, a customer cannot rate us 3.14159, whatever. They can't rate us pi. <laughs> they have to choose a value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. But this is sort of on average what we're going to get, we think, from all of our customers. So, you know, there, a lot of them are going to be around this range. And so that is our expected value, 4.26. And... Let's take another, well actually before we move on, I want to also show how we can calculate variance and standard deviation. Now, most of you know, well, just as a quick review, I won't assume too much, that you get variance by taking each value, I mean every single value, so all the, the, the returns we got, sub subtract the average, so in this case the expected value, this is how we're using expected value now, we're, we're treating it like the average, Subtract the average, square it, add all that up, and then divide by the total number. So it would be 200 here. So actually, we can do that. And I'm not going to go ahead. I'm not going to do that, that whole thing by, by hand. Um, but what I will do is I'll calculate the variance using Excel. And I'm just going to click on this column here to get everything in column A. Remember, this is... This represents, what's in column A, represents 16 ones, 14 twos, 33s, 58 fours, etc. And that is our variance as given to us by Excel. We don't actually have to go through all of that. And actually, you know, standard deviation is the square root of variance. Um, if you don't believe me, well, we'll do this two ways. Square root of this. And standard deviation of column A. Gives us the exact same thing. You can also calculate variance, let's say we didn't have access to Excel. That seems hard to believe, but let's just go, just, just bear with me here. I'm going to show you how we can do the same thing using the probability distribution. So I can t I'll, remember, variance is just the value minus the average, in this case the expected value, I'm going to go ahead and make that an absolute reference, squared, added up across all of the, the values, all of the results that we got. But in this case, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm not going to do it for every single result. I'm just going to do it according to our probability distribution. So I'm going to say 8% of the responses came through with 1. Now let me take that all the way down. And just to re re review what we're doing here, we said 5 minus 4.26, the expected value, squared, times the probability, probability of getting a 5. Or the percentage, is the, the probability is the exact same thing as the percentage of responses that came out as a 5. 
So when we add all this up, actually, let's do it like this, auto sum, I get 2.89. That's the variance, square root of that is our standard deviation. So that's, that's um, how you'd use expected value to get you to your variance and standard deviation. Let's do another example of expected value. We'll go through this one a little bit quicker. All right, so the expected value is going to be the weighted average. So we want to know, here's, here we got number of customers arriving in an hour. And, you know, this, I'm going to use this to uh, determine how many clerks I should hire, for instance. So I want to know how many customers walk into the store every hour, on average. So I do some tracking, and maybe I've tracked this over a month, you know, every, hour by hour over a month. And I, I'm not, I don't actually have my values here. I notice that I didn't put anything over in column A. I've really just got percentages. So I, I've, I've measured and I've tracked, and this is what I've got. So my expected value is going to be each of the outcomes times its probability. I don't want this to be a percentage. OK, fine. Add those all up. And I get an expected value of 3. That worked out nicely. I, I, I can't remember whether I planned it like that. Anyhow, this gives us, this tells us, okay, on average, 3 customers arrive per hour. That's my expected value. The, the definition actually makes sense here. It says, on average, 3 are arriving per hour. And let's go ahead and get the standard deviation of that. So we say equals 0 minus the expected value forgot to add in my parentheses. The, app, the, the value minus the expected value squared, and then I'm going to multiply it by the probability. Add all that up, and that is my variance. But I actually want standard deviation, so I'm going to say a square root of that. And my standard deviation is 2.46. That's a pretty big standard deviation. And what that sort of tells me, if we know some things about standard deviation, we know that you know on a, on a typical normal distribution, which I'm not sure this is, but OK, just bear with me. We, we know that roughly 95% of the results are going to fall within two standard deviations. And that, so essentially, we could say you know the bulk of our you know, we're going to, we're, it's very unlikely we're going to get more than, say, eight customers arriving in an hour. That's, that'd be two times the standard deviation plus the expected value. Um, and we, but we might have anywhere between zero and eight, and it's more likely, obviously, going to be in this range. But our expected value is three, our standard deviation is 2.46. Let's look at one more uh, example of standard deviation. Some of you, I'm sorry, not standard deviation, one more uh, example of expected value. This, this is, I think, relevant to everyone's lives, the expected value from a lottery ticket. So let's, let's think about this. We've got the cost of a ticket is $1. The odds of winning, and I, by the way, I've made all of this up. I have no idea whether this is accurate, but I'm sort of thinking along the lines of mega millions. The odds of winning are 1 in 228 million, because I said so. The jackpot payout. Uh, in this case, we're going to say is 300 million. So it's you know it's gotten up there. Now lottery fever is hitting. People are buying tickets. And we want to know what is the expected value from the purchase of one lottery ticket. Now we're going to make some assumptions here to make this easier on us. We're going to say there's no taxes. So we're just going to calculate the value straight up. We're going to assume no taxes, and we're going to assume no possibility of somebody else picking the same numbers that you did and having a split. So that's a, that's a big assumption as well. Well, let's figure out what this is. One thing I want to do first, I'm actually just going to put in the values here. I think it's just going to make things a little bit easier. Um, instead of, I can't use this in a calculation, for instance. It just says 1 in 228 million. Uh, I'm going to turn that into an actual number. So I'm going to say 1 divided by 228, and then six zeros. So that's my odds of winning right there. This cell, cell D28, my odds of winning. How do we get all the way down to? to row 20. I don't, I don't know how that happened. Anyhow, uh, my jackpot payout, well, that's, I'm, I'm just going to write this out instead of having, so that's 300 million. 
Now we need to figure out what the expected value is. Well, so to calculate the expected value of purchasing a lottery ticket, we need to figure out what is the odds of winning times the payout if you win added to the odds of losing times the payout if you lose. So let's think about that first. Let's first start off with payout, the, the odds of winning times the payout if you win. So that's going to be equal to, these are the odds right here, 1 in 228 million, times the payout, which is the jackpot. Although it's not exactly the jackpot. Truth is, it's the jackpot minus the $1 you spent to buy that ticket, right? So that's, so this is our odds of winning times the payout, which is the jackpot minus one dollar, plus the odds of losing, we have to add that to the odds of losing times the payout, the outcome, if you lose. So what are the odds of losing first? Well, winning and losing are complements of each other, right? If we have a one in 228 million odd, odds of winning, then we have essentially a 227,999,999 divided by 228 million chance of losing. Very good chance of losing. And that's actually just going to be 1 minus the odds of winning. And what's the payout if we lose? Well, the payout if we lose is actually going to be negative $1, right? Because that's how much we have to spend for that lottery ticket. So I'm going to say the odds, which was 1 minus cell D28 here, is the odds of winning, um, times negative one dollar. And what we get is 32 cents. That is the expected value of buying one lottery ticket with these major assumptions in place. Essentially we can expect the return of 32 cents on that dollar. So this is a good thing. It's saying uh, buying the lottery ticket, we factored in the cost of the ticket itself. We're saying you know, it's a it's a it's a 32% return um, on, on that ticket. It's good. Uh, of course, in all practicality, there's still a one in 228 million chance of winning. So, you know, is it a good bet? You know, it might have a positive return, but you're still not going to win. Now, let's take a twist to this. I'm going to actually remove the possibility of no splits. What if we actually assume that there can be splits? Well, it complicates our lives somewhat. So I'm going to open up this new sheet, and some of the things we've already done have been calculated. So we've, we've already calculated the expected value. Um, but now we have these probabilities for splits. I've, I've put in this, uh, this small table here, and it says, okay, there's a 40% chance that there are no splits. That if you win, you win by yourself. But then there's also a, a chance of a two-way split, a three-way split, a four-way split. How do we calculate the expected value of this ticket now? Well, by the way, we could throw in taxes as well, but I'm, that's actually an easier calculation. Now we need to figure out, well, what is the new, what's the expected value of the payout? The trick here, there's a, there's a couple of different approaches you, you can take, but what I would do first is to say, what is the expected value of the jackpot now? And then factor that in to our, our original equation where we figured out the odds of winning and the odds of losing and then the potential payouts. Now we can figure out a new expected value for winning. It's no longer just going to be $300 million, divide, sorry, minus one. Now we have some other, and now it's a little bit trickier. So we say the, the jackpot is going to be, if, if it's just one winner, then we say, it's, okay, it's 40% times $300 million. And so we're, remember, we're figuring out the expected value here. So we have to take all of the possible outcomes, multiply them by their probabilities, and then add them up. So now, with a 30% split, we say 30% times, is in a two-way split, we say it's $300 million divided by two. It's really $150 million. There's a 30% chance of getting $150 million. And so forth. We say it's a 20% chance of $300 million divided by three and a 10% chance of it being a four-way split, $300 million divided by four. If we add these up, the new expected value, if you win, if you win, the expected value is going to be 
192 million dollars, 500,000. So now let's let's factor that in. Instead of saying straight up, you get 300 million dollars if you win. Now we're going to put in our expected value if you win, considering that the fact that there is a potential split. So instead of using 300 million dollars, we're going to use 192.5 million dollars. So now our expected value on that lottery ticket is negative. Now we would have the probability, we would expect to be losing money on buying that lottery ticket because uh, it's because of the p potential for a split. So essentially it's, um, you know, when we factor in the cost of the ticket, we can expect an average return of minus 16 cents.